I come here to Seattle's Volunteer Park almost every day. Oh, it's so fun to play hide and seek. Mostly to let my daughter play. It's always a little strange to be swinging my little one with this view of the graveyard. Lakeview Cemetery, which borders the northern side of the park, is where many of Seattle's founders are buried, a little memento mori just over the barbed wire fence. It's a reminder of how connected this park is to the whole history of Seattle. Even this playground has seen a lot of that history. It's been here for over a hundred years. On the other end of the park is another reminder of our mortality, the steep climb up the hundred steps of the water tower. We're on the way at the top. Uh, yeah. Once you catch your breath, you can see why the park's designers chose this spot for a water tower with an observation deck on top. It's on the pinnacle of Capitol Hill, one of the highest points in the city and it serves in tandem with the Volunteer Park Reservoir to supply water to its residents. Volunteer Park was established in 1887. It was named to honor the veterans of the Spanish-American War. The water tower is part of the original park design by the Olmsted Landscape Design Firm, founded by Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox, the men who designed Central Park in New York during the 1860s and 70s. Volunteer Park was just one of a whole system of parks designed by the firm. Spaces like this, built specifically for the public to use, weren't really around until the 1800s. Designers in England pioneered the idea of publicly accessible open natural spaces, and Frederick Law Olmsted brought the idea to America. As industrialization boomed and cities like New York became more and more crowded and polluted, people like Olmsted believed that parks were a necessary source of access to nature that helped to improve people's physical and mental health. In certain corners, you can easily forget that this is a landscape almost entirely crafted by humans. The magnificent cedar trees, the shrubs, the flowers, and the paths are all calculated to create the illusion of an endless plant-filled space that guides your eyes and your feet in a careful choreography, providing shifting views and masking the city beyond the edges of the park. But there are plenty of man-made structures here too. The conservatory was completed in 1912, and like the city's park system, it was a symbol of prestige, an expression of Seattle's newfound prowess as a lucrative gold rush town the last stop before Alaska on the trek towards the Yukon. The statue out front is of William Henry Seward, who negotiated the purchase of Alaska from Russia in 1867. Greenhouses like this one were an industrial innovation. This one is built of iron and glass from a kit produced in New York, shipped here, and assembled by park staff. In the winter, when the northwest drizzle gets to be too much, these rooms provide a welcome respite. Most greenhouses like this, from the late 19th and early 20th centuries, have burned down or fallen into disrepair. It takes a lot of upkeep to keep this one standing. Just down the drive, between here and the water tower, is yet another symbol of Seattle's early ambitions. In the 1920s, wealthy Seattleites banded together to hire Carl F. Gould, a very prominent local architect trained in Paris, to design them an art museum. The result is this gorgeous piece of art deco design, which now serves as the Asian wing of the Seattle Art Museum. They also commissioned the Thomas Burke Monument. He was the main representative of James J. Hill, also known as the Empire Builder a railroad magnate who controlled the train lines between here and the Midwest. Seattle's economy dipped a bit during the Depression, but it recovered again during World War II thanks to the presence of Boeing. 
The rise of commercial airline travel in the 1950s and 60s boosted it again. And in 1962, Seattle hosted a World's Fair, the Century 21 Expo. All the kids know about it. You can ride on a real high-speed monorail. And have wonderful fun with the fabulous Bayway. Hooray! The Seattle Century 21 Expo. The Space Needle, which you can see from here, is the lasting physical legacy of this civic optimism. But Boeing couldn't buoy the city up for long. By the late 1980s, this city, and especially Capitol Hill, had become the haunt of artists and outsiders. This area became a hub of gay nightlife. Isamu Noguchi's Black Sun sculpture, which was commissioned by the city in 1968, is a quasi-symbol of the grunge scene, often associated with Soundgarden's hit Black Hole Sun. It overlooks the two duck ponds and the reservoir that were part of the original Olmsted design. Now, in 2016, Seattle is in the grip of another turn-of-the-century boom. Its economic engines, Amazon and Microsoft, are reshaping the neighborhood, and the horizon beyond Volunteer Park has become a forest of cranes and new high-rises. New symbols of wealth are popping up everywhere. My daughter's Seattle will be a very different place, but this landmark, Volunteer Park, will still be here for her to play in. <laughs>